of vlog style review for an episode of Breaking It All Down. I am discussing 20 Years Too Soon, the superstar Billy Graham story, which is a documentary film put out by WWE Films. I am doing this vlog style rather than incorporating footage from the documentary because the WWE is notoriously, for lack of a better term, strict on use of their footage on the interwebs. Whereas for a movie review, so I, I could probably get away with a, with you know actual fair use. WWE not so much, which is unfortunate. So let's talk about the documentary. If you're not familiar with superstar Billy Graham, he was a professional wrestler who worked in well, the business in the 70s and 80s. He the, the documentary primarily focuses more on his WWE run, though it does get into some of his time beforehand. And Graham's gimmick was probably fits more of the fast talking, let's fast talking, but smooth talking, physically buff and ripped style with a very smooth rap to his promos. Rap's a good term for it. He uses lots of rhyming. A good example is what you see is what you get, and what you don't see is even better yet. Example for a bit. He used his promos. And documentary covers Graham's early life, his getting into bodybuilding and Christian ministry, before getting into professional wrestling. Again, the documentary really doesn't cover much of his time pre-WWE, which is kind of a bummer, because what makes these documentaries work really well is how they show the build-up of a character and the build-up of a wrestler career, and when a wrestler finds their voice. When a, when a performer finds their voice as a wrestler. We see this with the Dusty Rhodes documentaries, the Ric Flair documentaries, that sort of thing. And it doesn't work with Billy Graham very well. We see his early career. We see him going to WWE he, with the, the superstar Billy Graham persona, with the tie-dye t-shirts, with his smooth rap style talking, and that sort of thing. They can draw comparisons between Graham and Ali. Now, Ali has gone on record as saying that he, when it came to his, his own professional, promotional interviews as a boxer, he was particularly inf influenced by professional wrestling himself. The idea from, taking the idea from wrestling that you don't just want to see, that you want people not just to pay to see you win, but there, but also if people, but the, that people will pay to see you lose. People will pay to see you get beat. And taking advantage of that, where rather than just sitting with the standard sort of heroic narrative for a cha for a fighting champion, which works you know, works as an African American for him, certainly works well with the black community, by taking on the persona that he did, he continues being a hero for the African American community and for white people who wanted who want to root for him and support for him. But for the people who won't buy in, who refuse to buy in, be they for, through racism or what have you, who refuse who just won't get behind Ali, it's something that hooks people, that hooks them and gets them to come in too, to root against him. Because they're racist assholes or whatever. And, and the documentary draws a connection between Billy Graham's style and Ali, complete with having, showing Graham using catchphrases that were popularized by Ali, vote like a butterfly, sting like a bee, for example. And the thing is, the way it's structured the documentary is it has Graham take, is it comes across as Graham taking credit for all these catchphrases. Which is kind of, eh. It's what, and a similar sort of thing for Dusty Rhodes as well, where they draw a comparison between Dusty Rhodes' rap style and Graham's rap style. Which is again kind of, eh, I'm more likely to buy it there for Dusty Rhodes and Billy Graham. But if you want to set this point up, 
particularly the case of Rhodes and Graham, because you have tape, all these massive tape libraries, it's really easy to do this. You put the date stamps on the video clips. You have Billy Graham in like this date in 1975 or whatever, cutting this promo using this particular style, and then you have footage from later with Dusty Rhodes incorporating that style. You have the float like a butterfly, sting like a bee interview with Muhammad Ali, and you have a, if you're trying to give credit to Billy Graham for that statement, you have the interview with, with Billy Graham and a date stamp before that, but they don't really do that. And then things get kind of wonky. We have Billy Graham switching his persona after coming back from an injury to a more serious martial artist type, and we never really get into why. Um, he says, oh, I didn't, just didn't want to be that character anymore, and maybe that's true, maybe that's just it, but it didn't... It felt off. And then we get into the matter of the WWF steroid lawsuit, steroid trial, and Billy Graham's role in that. The documentary sets it up that Billy Graham was the linchpin of the case against the WWE, and Billy Graham perjured himself to get back at WWE after his injury to pay for his medical bills and that sort of thing. And he blamed Vince McMahon for his injuries and so lied under oath. And it feels like the documentary during this part is throwing Billy Graham under the bus because no court case lives and dies by one man. And having Billy Graham, as written and how it's presented in the documentary, it's set up that Billy Graham is what the lawsuit against WWE, what the big major WWE steroid trial lived or died on. That it was just Billy Graham's lawsuit and all the other witness testimony, all the other other people who were suing, the federal government or what have you, were unrelated to that. Or were, were all based on that, and when Billy Graham revealed his treachery, then everything fell apart. And that feels off to me. It doesn't work. And I can't say why they chose to present it this way. And considering how much of this, this feels like Billy Graham's been thrown under the bus for his last, for the, essentially the conclusion of the documentary prior to discussion of his um, kidney transplant surgery, or liver transplant surgery, rather, and his advocacy for or organ donation after the fact. Um, I would almost call this, like, the equivalent of Billy Graham looking at the rise and fall of, ultimate, of the Ultimate Warrior documentary and going... I don't want that to happen to me. I'm, I want to get on board with this, no matter how bad the tone is, no matter how unpleasant it gets, no matter how fast and loose it plays with the truth, because if I get on board, I'm less likely, uh, it won't be about, it, it'll be about my triumphs as a wrestler, and not, oh, Billy Graham secretly plagiarized all his catchphrase and talking style from other wrestlers. He's most he's the most derivative guy in the world, and yada yada yada. So, it put a big questionable tone on the documentary, which I found unpleasant. Otherwise, there's a few matches on the DVD. They're all right. It's Billy Graham wrestles the 70s, late 70s, 80s WWE style. Not a lot of holds, not a lot of slams, lots of strikes. And they look alright, but it's... If that style of wrestling works for you, then it definitely works. It's it's not that hossy for a wrestling style. But it's it's okay. The promo clips on there are nice. I would have preferred something where... They put the feud where, like, we were, they, they put together, like, a couple interviews and then a match in the context of a feud. Like, oh, here's a couple of 
Billy Graham's interviews prior to his match with Dusty Rhodes. Then we have the bull. Then we have um, the Texas Death Match where the rope gets involved. For that matter, the documentary show talks about the Texas Bull Rope Match, which they, which the documentary credits Dusty Rhodes and Billy Graham with coming up with with inventing, based on the introduction of the rope in the in their earlier Texas Death Match. And do and how they did that, and like seeing the context, like the Texas Death Match. They are interviews and promos before the Texas Death Match. The Texas Death Match, more interviews and promos than the Bull Rope Match. Seeing those together would be great. It sees, it shows the audience and me how Billy Graham builds up his part of a feud and sells the character and that sort of thing, and sells his beef with Dusty Rhodes, with the American Dream, and then we get the payoff in the bull rope match. Something like that. So, that's my thoughts. It's it's alright. I I rented this from Netflix on this physical disc. I'm glad I did. I If I bought the actual disc, I'd probably been kind of disappointed with it. I do appreciate that WWE did put in the chunk at the end with Billy Graham's advocacy for organ donation and a clip of the ad recommending that people become organ donors. I dig that. I'm glad they did that. Otherwise, I feel that this is a lacking documentary, particularly in comparison to like the Bret Hart documentary, the Ric Flair, the Dusty Rhodes documentaries, even like the Rob Van Dam documentary. Having seen those DVDs and watched this Billy Graham one, for a documentary whose tagline is 20 years too soon, I never got across that he really was 20 years too soon. I never, the documentary never really sold the concept of Billy Graham as the guy who all these other wrestlers came to emulate. So, that's my thoughts. If you agree with my assessment or what have you, or disagree, or have your own recommendations of matches featuring superstar Billy Graham that you'd like to show, like, like, like to recommend. Particularly if you have links on YouTube or Daily Motion or somewhere else, please feel free to post them in the comments. If they're, either, they're not available on YouTube or, uh, or on Daily Motion, but they're on the WWE Network, post them as well, what program they're on or whatever, so you can watch them, easily find them that way. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe and get you notified when future episodes come out. And liking lets me know that you enjoyed the episode. The video on the right will be of the previous episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives, if you want to go see it or view previously that on that show. And the video on the left will take you to the previous episode of Breaking It All Down, while well, you'll get to see what I covered there. And below that will be a link to my Patreon page if you wish to back the show. Backing the show can get you a mention in the credits, and also, depending on your level of support, you can determine what I do future Let's Plays of on Breaking It All Down and what else I review on that show as well. So go ahead and click on that and back the show. Also, backing the show helps me get the show out more often and improve the production quality of the show, which is good for everybody. Once again, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.